Hello student, I am your APD ma'am. Today we are going to discuss about our next topic, reproduction in plants. Now all of you know that there are two important features of our living being. The first one is their capacity to respond to the environment and the another one is their capacity of reproduction. But what is the meaning of reproduction? So reproduction is the biological process. Biological means it's found in the living beings. And by this process, the living beings produce new individuals. That means our parents produce us from a mango tree, another mango tree is formed. So, this is the production of the new individual and this process, this biological feature is known as the reproduction. But what is the importance of this process? It's continue our life. It's the continuation from a mango tree, another mango tree is generated from that another one. So it's continue our life. And that is the main importance of the reproduction. Now, if we want to discuss the types of the reproduction, so firstly, we can divide it into two ways. First one is the sexual reproduction and the next one is the asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction means involvement of the sexual part of the living beings. For plants, it's the flower. And asexual reproduction means there is no involvement of the sexual part. That means there are many ways through which the plants can generate the new individual without involving the flowers. Because in a lower group of plants there is no flower but how they continue their life they continue their life through this asexual reproduction now we can classify the asexual reproduction into so many ways the first one is the budding next one fragmentation third one spore formation and the last one is the vegetative propagation. Now vegetative propagation means except flower from any parts of the plant we can generate new individual, new plants. So it may be natural or it may be artificial. So now we can divide the vegetative propagation into different categories. The first one is by the stem. And next one is the by the root. Third one by leaf. And this stem, root and leaves, these are the natural ways. Whereas Cutting, layering, grafting, these are the artificial ways of vegetative propagation. 
so today we discuss about the vegetative propagation broadly and we get a view about the sexual and asexual reproduction okay so let's start sexual reproduction so sexual reproduction in plants we can found it in the higher group of plants higher group of plants means angiosperm that means those plants who bear flowers and these flowers are the reproductive parts of the plants and these flowers may be same flower of the same plant or different flower of the same plant or different flowers of the different plants okay now the next one is the formation of gametes now these gametes are very important for the sexual reproduction because these gametes are some special type of cells where haploid number of genetic material is present now genetic material is actually a special type of structure found in the cell which carries the characteristics of the individual okay and these haploid cells or gametes are produced by a special type of cell division known as meiosis okay next one fusion of the male gametes now in case of plants we can get it from the pollen grains and the female gametes or egg or ovum is essential because this male gamete and the female gamete are fused for the production of the new individual okay now this fusion is known as the fertilization so fertilization is the very important event in case of sexual reproduction and to perform this fertilization gametes are required and these gametes are produced by the meiosis cell division and all of these things are executed by the plants through their sexual part that means flowers okay so another importance of the sexual reproduction is the generation of variation that means here if the male gamete or the pollen grains of a flower and the ovum or egg of another flower are fused then different types of plants can be produced and that leads to the variation in the plant so sexual reproduction is very important for the variation in the plants and this variation increase the adaptive capacity of the new plants adaptive capacity means they can sustain into any kind of harsh condition because our environment is changing with time so as variation is occur their adaptive capacity is also increased now the asexual reproduction now it's found in the lower group group of plants that means those plants who are non flowering okay and 
they reproduce into different ways except the pollination and the ways are budding fragmentation vegetative reproduction or production and as it's the copy of the mother plant there is no variation as the parents are same and as there is no variation their adaptive capacity is also low that means if the environment is changed then they can easily absolute from this environments so sexual reproduction is much more advanced than the asexual reproduction so this is all about a view of sexual and asexual reproduction now the vegetative reproduction or vegetative propagation now vegetative means any parts of plants other than the flower because flower is the sexual plant but other parts what are they it's may be root it's may be stem it's may be leaf now when these leaf root and the stems are involved into the generation of new individual then this kind of reproduction is known as the vegetative propagation or vegetative reproduction okay now see here this one is the modified root adult and the beet root and their modification is actually for the storage of their food okay but these structures are used for the generation of the new plants so by this modified root we can produce the new individual now the next one the modified stem first one is the ginger next one potato third one is the corn now see in three cases adventitious roots are generated and in case of potato if you see there is some special type of marking or structure on the surface of the potato these are known as the eyes and these eyes are important for the generation of buds and which with time grows a new plant so these modified stem are also used for the reproduction and again it is formed or modified for their storage of food now the next one is the leaf and in that case bryophyllum see here at the margin of the leaves new buds are formed and from here adventitious root are emerging and with time these buds are detached and produce the new plant so in this way the modified root stem and the leaves are used for the vegetative reproduction and these are all the natural process okay now the artificial one the first one is the cutting now see here this is a main plant and we cut a branch by a blade and then put it into a 
pot having the soil and with time we can see that from this cutting region the roots is developed and the plant gradually grows so cutting is the another way of the vegetative propagation next one layering now see here a branch of the main plant is dipped into the soil for a certain period or certain days and after that after watering it we can see that roots developed and new plants grow and this is known as layering and the third one is the grafting now in that case two parts are required first one is the stalk and the next one is the seed stalk is the rooted part to which we can add the another part of the another plant so this is the stalk and this is the seed where there is no root and after cutting they are joined and covered with a cotton or any um, cotton material and with time we watering it and after certain period we can say that from this region advantageous root are produced after that we cut it and replant it okay so these are the artificial way of the vegetative propagation so for today this is the last one and this is the assessment solve it and if there is any problem you can contact thank you